Welcome to the Reckoning Podcast, where we stoke a campfire, gather around, and have real life conversations with old friends, new friends, professionals, and just shoot the shit. Reckoning all things from hunting, outdoors, beauty, entrepreneurship, relationships, life, and more. It's all just a reckoning. Gotta get my jacket on because we turned off the heater and my office is freezing. This week, I wanted to do kind of a mini episode. I was thinking it could be fun to start doing these episodes in between having guests or something really beefy that we're talking about. I wanted to share with you recipes. I've been really surprised by how many recipes are some of our top articles on the website. If you didn't know, we do have some healthy recipes, just some good old fashioned comfort recipes, and also, of course, some wild game recipes. And I also have forgotten that I kind of have this like database on my phone of just all these recipes that we've made using, you know, like I said, wild game or fish or just something good and easy to make. And I've been handing these out to my friends and texting them, which I'm obviously so happy to do. But sometimes with my recipes and my family will be the first ones to say this is it's hard for me because I am someone who, when I cook, I cook like based off of smelling things and like the flavor and adapting to what we like. Cody really likes spicy or we really like garlic and then kind of making things to whoever is eating it with us. Um, so when I send over these recipes, it's kind of like, here's a base. But if I was to do it, this is kind of what I do to like make it that much better and how we prefer it. But again, adapt it to you with that. I was thinking we can go through and I can walk you through a recipe, all these recipes moving forward. And this one today is on our website. So if you want the exact recipe, I will put that in the show notes. How you find the show notes is whatever app that you're listening to it on. You'll open up, obviously, so you're looking at that app, not when you're driving, we know this, and you'll just kind of scroll up and below you'll see kind of an outline of the episode and you'll see, find the recipe here. This way, um, we can kind of, some of them I think will kind of cook along together so I can let you know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, If you're someone that's not like super comfortable in the kitchen or you just maybe have some questions, I might be able to answer these along the way and it'll give you an idea for some recipes because like I always say on here, you always got to eat. They're always hungry. You just fed them. Today's recipe is going to be poor man's lobster. This is a recipe that I think is one of our most popular recipes uh, because one who doesn't love lobster and poor man's lobster. I mean, hello. (laughs) We are in times where let's make some lobster, but let's make it affordable. And then also it's made using a white fish um, and something you may already have on hand or something that you can easily find. This is fantastic. I know a lot of people currently like it right now, not only because it's really quite healthy, but also it makes for awesome fish fries. I know a lot of people are making fish for like the football games, playoffs and things like that. Poor Man's Lobster, like I said, is a whitefish recipe that only takes a few simple ingredients that you probably already have on hand, and it's ready in just 15 minutes. It's cooked similar to lobster once it's boiled and topped with lemon juice, and its texture seriously mimics lobster. We dip it in butter to give it that full taste. There is no fishy taste here. I'm not really big on like fishiness. And it's a great way to use up that halibut or cod that you already have in your freezer. I think you're really going to love this recipe because it's easy. It's macro friendly. It's a great way to use up that fish in your freezer from your fishing trips. And it's a more budget friendly way to have lobster using halibut or cod. Like I said, it really wows a crowd for any gathering. And it's one of our favorites to serve up at fish fries or like the Super Bowl party. If you're wondering what fish is known for poor man's lobster, the most popular fish we use for this is halibut that we have caught up in Alaska. This is actually how we got this recipe about 20, probably more years ago when my dad went on his fishing trip up there. This was something that they taught him to do. 
Like I said, it's a tried and true recipe that the whole family loves. We love using cod as well because sometimes that's easier and more affordable to find. I always find mine at Costco. The frozen one, a fresh is always best, obviously, but if you are looking for something affordable that you can find easily at Costco, they have a really nice thick cod fillets there. The only difference that I've noticed versus like making it with halibut or cod is that the cod tends to... It's a little more flaky and falls apart more than the halibut. Side by side, we've kind of tested them. Cody and I have tested them. It has the same flavor as lobster. It's kind of just easier to find, like we said, unless you are lucky enough to have some of that fresh Alaskan halibut in your freezer. Monkfish is what is truly considered a poor man's lobster. The more digging I've done on it and the comments I've also received. Um, but when I was kind of doing some further research, monkfish is considered poor man's lobster. We've never used this. It's not something that I've found, but if you have and you've done it, I would love to hear how it compares to halibut and cod. All right, let's get into it. What is poor man's lobster made from and what ingredients do you need? You need white fish halibut or cod, or again, monkfish, water, sugar, salt, and then for your dipping, butter and lemon. I know, <laughs> so easy. It really is one of the most fun, simple, delicious recipes that you can make for a crowd. And it's really kind of fun to like sit and build it as you're there together. And I found that this recipe will really take people that aren't really into fish and kind of change their minds. I know it did for me as a kid too how to make poor man's lobster. In a medium pot, you're going to bring two quarts of water, sugar, and salt to boil. You're going to cut up the halibut or cod or monkfish or whatever whitefish you're trying into large pieces. So you want to make them into kind of like chunks. If you're wondering what size of chunks, you can look on the website. I found with like the frozen halibut or cod flakes that we, or fillets that I bought from Costco, I would be cutting those into like thirds. Um, yeah, thirds. Sure. Let's look. You want them into like pretty big chunks is what I prefer. Uh, obviously like the bigger the chunk, <laughs> is that gross? The bigger the chunk, the longer it's going to take. So you're going to bring that water to boil and you've got your cod ready to go. Next, you're going to add your fish into the water. You're going to boil the fish for about 10 minutes. A good sign as when this is done is when the fish will float to the top of the water and it'll be firmer and flakier. You'll be able to visually see this. As the fish cooks while you're doing this, you can be melting butter into a pot for dipping. When the fish is done cooking thoroughly, you will remove it from the water and onto a paper towel lined plate. This will just get off that excess water. Then once you're done, you can put it onto another serving plate if you wish and top with lemon juice to your liking. Or again, you can just kind of have wedges of lemon lined up and let whomever's eating it decide how much lemon they want on there. And you can also serve with butter. So the way I like to serve it is plate your fish with veggies and sides, a little thing of melted butter, a slice of lemon, and then you top with your favorite seasoning if you desire. Honestly, you just dip this and enjoy it. That's literally it, guys. That, <laughs> that is how easy poor man's lobster is. And I'm telling you, you have to try it. I would love for you guys to tag us on social media showing us that you used it. Be sure to use at Brittany.long or at The Reckoning Podcast showing us you making your poor man's lobster. If you're looking for an awesome side dish to go with this and you're wanting to venture out, you're ready to bring out the Dutch oven again. Again, this is another great way when you're having a party to be able to serve up something large enough for a crowd without taking up space in your stove or your oven. I highly suggest using our easy and creamy Dutch oven potatoes with bacon. Mm. You know, I cannot talk about health and fitness without mentioning my favorite supplement and apparel company. That would be Mountain Ops. If you've been here before, you know, you know, I'm always popping in talking about my mountain ops and I wouldn't mention it if I truly did not love the products. Something that is key for me for the mountains is getting in an easy mill and that is with mountain ops ammo. It is an easy meal replacement with four and a half servings of real fruits and vegetables and it has 19 grams of protein plus it's low lactose, which 
is good for my tummy. And you know we love our protein bars. They are literally some of the best protein bars on the market. I would say the best in flavor. I really love the peanut butter one or the caramel. We have these everywhere. And so far, everybody that's tried them says that they have loved it. Another part of my routine and something that's super important for my health and fitness is getting in recovery. And this means good sleep and recovery for my muscles. I'm able to do this with Mountain Ops Slumber. It is kind of like a sleepy tea. I like the cider. Cody likes the salted caramel. Try it. It gives you that whole essence of having the routine, something to sip on at night. It'll help you replace all those glasses of wine that you know you're not wanting to have all the time. And it helps with recovery, good sleep. You wake up the next day feeling refreshed and not groggy. Plus, their new joggers and leggings. Girl, you have to check these out. And don't forget, men, their merino wool pullovers are awesome for the colder months. If you want to check out my favorites, go to mountainops.com and put in the code BRIT free ship to receive your free shipping. That's mountainops.com and use my code BRIT free ship to help support the show and get your free shipping. A few questions that I've got in regards to the poor man's lobster is how do I tell if my halibut or co- cod is done cooking thoroughly? With a white fish, you're looking for a firm and flaky fish that you're wanting to cook this recipe with. You'll want to cook it to 130 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. The center of the fish will be opaque and not pink. Besides a food thermometer, another great way to tell if your fish is done is by simply testing it with a fork. This is done by sticking your fork at the thickest point of your halibut or cod and then gently twisting your fork. If done, your fish will flake off easily. Again, you will see that it has lost its translucent, glossy pink and raw appearance. The question often comes cod versus halibut. The main difference we've noticed is halibut has a strong flavor when it's not cooked into poor man's lobster recipe, whereas cod has a mild flavor. I have a video on this and halibut is definitely, it kind of shares when Cody and I did the tape the side-by-side testing of our Costco cod versus the halibut my dad brought back from Alaska. Uh, You could definitely see in this video that halibut is much more dense and a firm texture. And then with the cod, you'll see that it is more flaky and it kind of just peels apart more easily. And the cod is obviously often served in fillets, whereas halibut is more of like a steak, which may be a contributing factor to this. I've noticed that Costco's cod is usually packaged more steak-like, which is perfect for this recipe. And overall, my husband Cody, I'll call him the lobster expert in this because he's one who I've ventured out with more lobster than I have. He says they both taste like lobster, which is the goal with poor man's lobster. I told you guys it was going to be a quick little episode this week. I would love to hear if you make poor man's lobster. Like I said, if you are looking for the recipe, be sure to scroll up into the show notes and look for it, or you can go to thereckoningpodcast.com forward slash poor dash man's dash lobster, and that will take you to the recipe. And it has a recipe card with the exact measurements and what you need, instructions, and some recipe notes for ideas and just like these questions that I've answered so that you know exactly what to look for. I would love to hear if you guys have made poor man's lobster using another kind of fish. I'm always down to try and use what fish that we're able to catch and use, or if you've used it with the original, the OG poor man's lobster monkfish. Also, if you make this recipe and you love it, please be sure to leave some stars on the recipe and a comment that just helps more people find this recipe for the reckoning podcast and if there's something you have seen us cook before and you want us to break down the recipe so that you've got more ideas and recipes in your back pocket then be sure to message us or email us and let us know and we are happy to share those until next week Please don't forget to subscribe. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star rating and review. It seriously helps more than you know. If you took something away from this podcast or you enjoyed it, please take a screenshot of you listening to it or a selfie and tag us on Instagram at The Reckoning Podcast or me at Brittany.long. We're excited to chat with you next week.